Hi, welcome to how to make wind guard lowers for your motorcycle. So I picked up this uh, great V-Star 1100, love the bike tremendously, but I'm getting this uh, helmet buffeting at speeds higher than about 50 miles an hour. I uh, did a bunch of research, found out that a lot of other folks are experiencing the same thing, and the general consensus is that it's air coming up underneath your windscreen and uh, getting sucked into that low pressure area behind the main windscreen and being pulled up and, and buffeting your, uh, your helmet uh, around that high pressure area, that stream that comes up over the windscreen itself. Um, to kind of visually demonstrate, uh, what I did find out is that, sure enough, if I'm sitting on the bike, the air is deflected over the top and you can feel lots of air coming up around the tank, especially right here, a little bit here as well, but right here. And if I take my arm while I'm riding and I put it over like this and block that air, then uh, sure enough, the head buffeting pretty much goes away. So everybody says in order to fix that, you want to put on some wind guard lowers. Uh, there are some that you can buy. Your motorcycle probably has uh, a set or your manufacturer that you can buy. Um, some folks already have like a switchblade screen that you can get a system specifically for it. But uh, since I bought this bike used, I don't know exactly what system this is, and it uh, doesn't look like, especially with these lights being put on here, I can put any wind guards that are uh, at the level point or forward of this um, of the strut. So I'm going to have to put them behind. I'm going to have to custom make them. So that's what this video is. So what I was thinking is just envisioning that I want to have some sort of a plexiglass or metal guard here that deflects the air out and around and I can have it mounted this way against some sort of an L bracket. So if I have, I think, an L bracket that mounts about like this and it uh, comes out and up, up front um, and then put the windscreen, um, maybe cut some Lexan right behind it and then mount it with some sort of a, another panel behind to keep it you know, nice and tight and maybe use some, some rubber to dampen the vibration, then I think that's going to work okay. Now I can't run this too far down or the wind's going to try to rack it and I'm probably also going to have to drill a hole through the existing mount so that I've got you know, two of these screws um, stabilizing that mount. Now in order to do this job I needed materials. So the first thing I knew I needed was something like Lexan which is a very very hard plastic I picked this up at the uh, local Lowe's store. Um, Home Depot probably has it as well. Maybe your other local um, shop has them. But anyway, it is tough, virtually unbreakable, and this is a uh, about an 8x10 sheet. And I think it was only about $4 a sheet. So I went ahead and got two just in case I messed one up and needed to, to cut another. I wouldn't have to run out again. I also picked up this aluminum angle bracket, and uh, it says that it is... Eh, it's not focusing very well. It's an 1 8 inch thick three-quarter inch by 48 inch aluminum uh, angle uh, bracket and uh, I also picked up a flat one-eighth inch thick three-quarter by 48 inch aluminum um, uh, oh street bar I guess is what you call it and what I'll do then is I will take this Lexan I'll put it here on like one side and then I'll have this bar on the other and I'll run screws which I also bought I went ahead and bought a half inch 10 by 32 half inch and 10 by 24 3 8 inch just for a couple different options there um, to mount this Lexan like that. See how that's positioned? I think that will work. Let's give it a try. This is the Lexan piece and this is about where it would mount right by the bolt and you see that it does have probably enough length. I hope it does. And it does sit behind my turn signal light and it is flat here so I think that if I mount the bracket just like that so I think that my my overall length is correct I just need to make sure that it doesn't interfere with the uh, fork shock here and um, I think I could probably cut this in half I think about half of the sheets maybe about the right size I don't want it looking really goofy and coming way out if uh, that's not enough maybe I'll do it again I'll cut some more sheeting but uh, let's try cutting this in half and seeing if we can use one of these sheets for both Okay, let's measure the Lexan and cut it in half. So go ahead and get a tape measure here. Actually, something a little more accurate would be better, wouldn't it? And we'll run this along the edge. And first we'll mark what our, what our halfway point is. So this is exactly 8 inches across. We'll mark the 4 inch point. 
and sometimes it's handy to mark it in multiple places on the way down to make sure that our line is straight. There's wording on this label which is in the way. Alright, so this is establishing a really nice line. And then what we'll do, we'll join that line with a straight edge. And mark it off, right? Grab a longer straight edge. And get my end marks, make sure my middle marks are pretty close. And run that line. Alright, we have a line I can follow now. Now it's time to bust out the bandsaw. So we'll go ahead and turn the lights on here and turn the laser on. And what we want to do is run that laser right along that midpoint. Because we are cutting this thing directly in half and we don't need to be that accurate, I am going to run it right along the laser line. Um, when you're cutting wood and you want to make sure that your inner dimensions are perfect, you would uh, make sure that you are cutting on whatever side you intend. In this case we're going to run it down the middle. The only problem is, is that my guard right here hmm, doesn't really allow me to put that piece right up against it because it's got a gap. See this gap right there allows it to slide in? That's not good. So I'm going to have to put a piece of wood here that goes all the way to the bottom and then straighten it out this way. Now it is important that you get this thing straight or else it's going to work against you. Let's see how that is. Alright, now it's pretty close. Now it needs to be a little bit closer up. Something like that. Better. All right. So let's see if this bandsaw cuts this lexin well. Perfect cut. Really nice. But you know what? Before we do any shaping, let's go ahead and just test these and see how they look. We've got one that's going to go here on this side and another one here. Because I need the brackets to be up a little bit, this is about as far down as they're going to get to go. So I think that's pretty good. Um, the bottom, you know, I need to curve them into rounded edges to match the curvature, the roundness of the screen. They've rounded everything, every bit of their lexan. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go ahead and, and curve all these off and make them uh, kind of oval. And uh, that should be good enough. Let's give it a try. Okay, now I'm going to shape the corners. In the past, I've had some luck using a bandsaw or a disc, and a bandsaw, a band sander or a disc sander. The only thing is, is depending upon the kind of plastic, it can either you know go really well or it can get hot and goo up on the uh, sander. So we're going to give it a try, and if it works, that's the technique I'll use. If not, I'll be back to the bandsaw or a surform or a file or something. So let's give it a whirl here.
be okay. I think I'll do the rest of them. Okay, have a look. I think I got it more or less shaped. I did go ahead and sand all of the little edges here to get uh, the roughies off. And uh, not too bad, I think. Not tailor made yet, but uh, got the basics there. So now let's try the brackets on and see if we can get our mounting together. First things first, we've got a measure. So we know that this is 8 by 10, so it should be 10 inches long, but you know, I'm going to go ahead and just cut it to fit, literally. And uh, I'll cut it just under to fit so that it's not like dangerously on the outside of this thing, although I will ground it off when I'm done. So go ahead and measure right there. And if I had stopped breaking my lead, I'd actually make a mark. Here we go. So that's where I need to make that cut. Okay, I mounted the L bracket in my vise. Why didn't I use my bandsaw? Well, I've got a wood blade in there and I don't really want to munger it all up. So we'll go ahead and use a good old trusty metal hacksaw. This is aluminum, should be pretty easy to cut. But anyway, well, that's what we'll use. So I went ahead and, and uh, used my wooden pieces that I used as a guard over there uh, to protect it from crushing inside my vise. Got it nice and tight. But one thing I did do is I made sure that the outside edge of this piece of wood was right up against my line, so I should be able to follow it during my cut. Those, with, those of you with electric cutters are laughing at me right now. Those of you without electric cutters are thinking about getting one. There we go. I'll go ahead and cut the other one. Well, what do you think so far? I think it fits pretty good. You don't see the curved edges here on the inside, so I could cut the metal a bit smaller, but yeah, it's good enough for now. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and sand down the uh, metal edges to keep them from cutting me and uh, we'll start with the rest of the mounting. What I said sand, I actually mean to grind. So having a grinder is a very handy thing. Only costs about 40 bucks I think, for the cheap ones anyway, which is what I got. Sharpen knives really well, and scissors too. And lathe tools. Mostly pretty good except for the inside edges and they're a little bit tricky. I got him. Okay, I went ahead and cut these long pieces that we're going to put on the back of the Lexan. And we're going to drill holes and run bolts through them so that it holds them that way. Um, I went ahead and cut them, removed most of the adhesive and labels. Now would be a great time if you want to paint these things to get them really nice and sticky free. And uh, put whatever color you want on them. I'm going to go ahead and leave them aluminum because there already is silver uh, mounting hardware for the uh, upper windscreen, but if you want a particular look and you want to go ahead and paint them, go for it. Now's a great time to do it. 
All right, I determined that a 1032 by half uh, machine bolt and washer is going to do the trick. I did buy a couple different sizes. The 1024 by 3 8 is not going to be big enough, so it's the 1032 by half that seems to be the trick, and I'll show you. This will go right through here perfectly, and it will nut out on the other side, and it will be just a teeny little bit of that stem left. So that's perfect. What I'm going to do now is that, really, there's enough bracing across this entire thing. All I really need is a bolt here at the top, one in the middle, and one at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and measure again. Remember that this should be 10 inches long, so I should be able to go 5 in. And 8, 9, 10, yeah, so I should be able to go 5 in and mark that as my center spot. It doesn't have to be exact, but I'm just trying to come up with something that is structurally more or less in the middle. And do that on this one as well. If you want to be more of a perfectionist about it, go for it. That's going to be good enough for me. So I'm going to go ahead and use my drill press and I'm going to run holes here and I'm going to find a bit that allows this to fit through and just, not much more. Look to me like 1364 is going to be the one to use. So I'm going to go ahead and de-check my previous bit. Put in the 1364. Hook that guy up. Do a quick visual run out test. Yep, it's in. And it does have a little laser on it, but I think I let the battery run out. So we won't be using it. Um, what I do need to do is raise my table a little. And I'm going to go ahead and tighten everything up so that I can run a line straight through, all the way through of the pieces. Okay, I went ahead and took the coating off of the Lexan and I remounted it. And isn't that nice? It's kind of holding together real, real well. I'm, I'm glad about that. Um, now I have to figure out where this is going, where I'm going to run my screw through. After fiddling with this a little bit, I realized that my original plan wasn't going to work. This bolt here not only attaches the mount for the upper windshield, but also acts as a uh, a fork mount and um, I wasn't going to be able to put just this bit of a sheet in here run the bolt through and then have it be a part of the whole clamping um, force I just there's not enough of this exposed in order to satisfy all of the clamping force necessary from this bolt so because I couldn't really use that on there um, I, I really couldn't use that bolt itself but no problem what I went ahead and did is I found a way to mount this um, lower shield in a way that uh, I think works real well I used two bolts one here and one up above the same size bolts as I used for these and went ahead and drilled holes for them and then mounted them um, basically placed them and held them in place marked them and then drilled them Actually, I just tapped one of them, drilled, bolted it, and then positioned um, the, uh, the, the, the lower so that the next one was showing. And then I went ahead and drilled it through uh, in order to make sure that I wasn't drilling them off center. Because if I did, it would make the holes extra big in order to make them work. And I've done that before, and it's really a bummer. So this is basically how I ended up mounting it. Um, I think it works really well because it... Uh, allows the wind to come and blow you know up above the top for the upper but then the lower is real nice and sturdy it does intersect meaning it does sit behind it enough so that any wind that it's not carried up is deflected actually downward this doesn't um, I don't know if you can see that angle it is angled a little bit lower so the air ends up being deflected downwards so that's how it ended up being I got a chance to ride on it this morning and it works it works great I'm really glad I put them on um, the buffeting on my helmet uh, is almost non-existent now even up at 65 70 miles an hour so it was totally worth doing total cost of the project is about 35 bucks 
um, and I didn't use all of the materials. I actually have enough materials. Uh, I just need to get some extra screws to be able to do a whole second pair. But, uh, you know, that's how it goes. Sometimes you buy more material, material than you need. But in the end, I saved probably about $100 compared to buying these things new. And I think they look okay. If I bring it around on the front here, you see that they're really kind of hard to see. You almost have to know what to look for. And uh, I'm pretty happy. So, hey, hope that was helpful. Make your own. Uh, feel free to experiment and uh, custom tailor it to your bike. And uh, good luck. Be safe. Keep the rubber side down.